Ink Stitch just released version 2.1.0. Exciting and awesome because all of these new features right here, which I'll get to in a minute. The number one new feature in Ink Stitch version 2.1.0 is it comes with its own installer. Yeah, you don't have to do it anymore. Click a button, install. Mine will be a little bit harder because, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Anyway. Installers added for Windows, Mac, OS, and Linux. <sighs> How many times in this video am I going to have to say, thank you, devs? This will be one of those. Thank you, devs. For other features, more fonts. We now have more set and stitch fonts, and some of the existing fonts received updates. Awesome. Letter to font extension. This one's cool. Import embroidery fonts into Ink Stitch to prepare them for the lettering tool. This sounds to me like you can buy a satin stitch font off of Etsy and import it into Ink Stitch and assign keystrokes to it. Ah, thank you, devs. There's two, three, if you count, if you get literal. Anyway, uh, satin columns split sat, uh, split stitches through maximum stitch length setting and params if you have a really wide satin stitch like my first puff video it was too wide you could split i could go into params and set a setting to make a maximum stitch length and it would have made a double satin stitch i'm not sure technically the details yet we'll get to that later it probably in another video all of these new features i'm going to come out with another video that really goes into depth and into these new features right now this is an install and i'm going to install four systems yeah four systems and it's probably going to take less than five minutes on each on all of those in this video to cover that uh, install custom palette install a single gpl file with your thread colors I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. PDF estimated thread. Print PDF roughly calculates estimated thread. Multiplier settings can be adjusted. I was reading a little bit of the development discussion about this, and it seems like it was actually pretty hard to get this close to right. But you can, if it's not really close to right on your machine, you can change the multiplier settings. Try to get it a little bit closer. Force lock stitch option. Lock stitches can be enforced independently from the collapse length setting. Stitch plan. This one's cool. Can be adapted to be shown on top of the design or show needle points. I don't know for sure, but this might be why you're designing it in Inkscape. You can see the ink stitch plan over the top. I don't know for sure, but we'll know in a few days. So awesome. Bug fixes. Got to talk about bug fixes. Lots of bug fixes. These are the, the big ones. Params and letterings were crashing on Windows systems with uncommon language settings. Selecting only text or images has been resulting into a trace back message. I've gotten that one several times. G code Z value can now be set to a number higher than 10. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds cool. Objects with a color gradient will render in black instead of giving a traceback error message. So if you have a gradient of one color into a, another color in, in Inkscape, when you go to, to do a ink stitch, it won't give you an error message anymore, but it will just render the whole thing black instead. So that's, that's awesome. That's good. Mask and clip path objects will not throw an error message, but will be ignored. I've had that one happen too. Fix some color issues. Not sure there. And some more. We don't know what the some more is. Let's look at the uh, install. So this is, we're still in inkstitch.org. This is the install section. You must have Inkscape version 1.0.2 or higher. I think this one's on 1.1 or 1.2. Not sure. Deb package.deb. You just download it and you click the deb file. RPM package. Download it. Click the RPM package. Downloader script. This is the one I'm going to have to use because I'm not on a .deb or a .rpm system. I am running Linux, but not one of those. So I will have to use the download installer script. And I can edit the script if I need to. And you can download the, dot, the tar .z, tar .xz archive. And the way this works is exactly like we used to do it. You unpack it, you move it into the extensions folder, just like we used to do. 
that's in case everything else doesn't work you still have that option and then restart now there is a note here that you do need to delete old extensions first so any before you do any of these installs uh, scripts you do need to delete the old extension first so just go into the extensions folder and delete those before you run it quick note about doing that this should theoretically be the last time that we have to do that because once you've installed it with a deb rpm or installer script and windows installer and mac installer once you've already done that then next time when you have another deb rpm installer whatever it will remove the previous one before it installs the new one so it'll be done for you automatically so one more time to do a manual thing manipulation of folders and files i'm gonna go back to windows make sure you uninstall make sure you remove uh the old version first same way i'm sure mac is probably the same way antivirus software on windows this this has been a problem for a while even the microsoft one that's pre-installed so if you didn't think you had one you do and it's it's already there through microsoft if you have mcafee or norton's you'll have to figure out how to do it on theirs information is right here inkstitch.org uh, forward slash docs forward slash install hyphen windows this is a fresh and brand new install of Windows 10, Windows 11 should work exactly the same way. The only thing I have done on it is install Inkscape and I have downloaded Inkstitch. So I'm gonna run that download right now. It did warn me a lot of, uh, a couple of times about downloading it, that it may or may not be safe. You need to know who it's from, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, we know. So Inkstitch for Windows. Go ahead and double click, double click that. And Microsoft Defender is going to prevent it run anyway and i'm sure i'm gonna have to go into defender and authorize it to be able to run so that's fine hit next yes install coffee nice and quick hit finish and i'm going to go ahead and authorize it through the antivirus if i remember how to do all this antivirus threat protection that's what we want make it big to see it virus and threat protection manage settings exclusions how to remove exclusion extensions i'm just going to go ahead and do the whole folder just done with it do i remember where that is i could not remember where it is so i went ahead and brought up inkscape open the extensions click that hit a control c to copy i'm going to go back into there and control paste should get us to where we want to be i want that whole folder Right, I want the extensions folder, not the ink stitch folder. So I'm gonna select the folder we're on. Hit yes. I've got to restart this now for it to take effect. And it should run just fine now. New document. Let's draw out a square. Extensions, ink stitch. Awesome there it is sweet params boom and it is first time i've gotten to see it sweet okay windows is out of the way so this really is going to turn into a video about see how easy ink stitch is to install now just make sure you remove the old plugin first but yeah, it's going to be how easy is it to install. So I'm going to do these in order. Back in Linux, do these in order. Deb will be next, which means I'll be loading up Kaboom 2. So this is Kaboom 2 2204, the development version. So I'm going to download the .deb because Kaboom 2 is a .deb, Kaboom 2 base. Uh, just a quick note, 
I don't remember if I mentioned it, but I do remember saying in the Ink Stitch release notes, if you're on a uh, Ubuntu-based system, do not install Inkscape with a snap install. It causes issues. I'm going to save file. It causes issues with Ink Stitch, and honestly, it causes issues with pretty much any plugin you try to install with. Uh, I went straight with, th with this one. I went straight to inkscape.org and got it from there and installed just fine. Is it done already? It is done already. So we're going to open that folder up. And uh, there it is. All I'm going to do is double click it. This should come up. All dependencies are satisfied. Install package. Run your little password in there. It says it's done, so we're going to go ahead and close that and close that. And we're going to go ahead and close that. And let's go to our Inkscape. Click a new document. See if it's there. Ink stitch. Boom. Oh. I haven't looked at lettering yet. Let's look at lettering real quick. Wow. Wait. Cool. Okay. So that's Deb. We are now in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. I love Tumbleweed. If you want a granite rock solid stable rolling release distribution, it is OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So let's move along. And ta -da. I have to compare sizes because the RPM downloaded a little bit slower. And it's this running Google Chrome, so it's telling me it might be harmful. Do I want to keep or discard? We will keep it. I'm going to click this little button and show in folder. And by the way, I have previously installed Inkscape. Let's see what our options are. We're going to open with Yes Software. We will accept. I'm going to ignore and see what it does. Installation successful, even though it said that the package was broken, it finished. Don't know why I did that, but I have had to do that in Tumbleweed before with other things. This next one is my very own personal desktop variety of Linux. It is not a dev, it is not an RPM, it is Manjaro, which is an Arch base. First thing I'm going to do is go into my preferences and scroll down to system, open up user extensions. We're going to highlight everything in here and delete. I'm just going to click inside there. Control A to select all. Shift Del to delete all without question. Close that out. Close that out. Close that out. Let's get the installer script. Again, it's not Deb, not RPM. Yeah, that looks like a good place to save it. We're going to save it right there. We're going to open that folder. Great thing about Plasma is I do have the terminal right underneath here. It's a little hard to see on this particular setup, but it's there. So there's two ways you can run this. You can do sh space dot forward slash and then the file ink stitch. 
2.1.0 linux.sh that will run it you can also right click on the file go to properties and make sure it has permission or make sure it has wow that was quick that was really quick okay so the other way is right click on the file go to permissions make sure it's selected as executable and then you can just double click on it like a run it file wow that was quick let's close that out we're going to fire up inkscape and look what we got extensions ink stitch there it is let's see what lettering we have yep Load it up just like the other one. Nice. Ooh, that one's pretty. I'm going to have to show that one to my wife. I don't know if you can see on the, on the side over there. She's right over there. <laughs> so, lots of... Ooh, that, that paper is nice. Lots of new ones. And they also said that some of the old ones got worked on. Got it upgraded. That is all of the installs I said I was going to do. Pulled them off and it probably took me about five minutes time to actually complete the four. So in the next video, we're going to take a deeper dive into what is new in the new ink stitch. Till then, thanks for watching.